Hey everyone, it's Tim from TimGuiner.com and I'm back with a new series of videos that I'm going to be doing for the summer. Uh, I'm going to call it Adventures in Painting. And what I'm going to do is take you through the process of me painting something I've never painted before. I'm going to show you just uh, what goes through my thinking, my thought process, um, how I figure out the different colors, um, sketching different things, uh, figuring out each element. And it's just going to be an adventure in painting, and I hope you all come along with me on that adventure throughout the summer. Uh, I'm going to try to make five or six different episodes. Each episode will have uh, four different parts, maybe three different parts, depending on how complicated the subject matter is. Um, and I'll take you through each uh, step of what I do on learning my, learning my subject, uh, through learning the colors and then doing the painting. What I've been thinking about doing is uh, a painting of apple blossoms uh, because it's May 29th today and uh, my apple trees out in my yard are pretty much in full bloom. They're really pretty and I've never painted them before. So I figured I've got the subject matter outside. It's a nice day out, nice and bright. So I might as well go out and learn a little bit about my subject and then what I'm gonna do is kind of tackle uh, how I'm gonna set up the painting and I'm gonna bring you along with me. So let's go outside, check out the apple trees and learn a little bit about the apple trees and apple blossoms. Wish that I could stay Wish for this moment to never go away but it's all in my mind And though I know that there is nothing to find Okay, so we're zoomed in here underneath the tree and what I want to talk about is how I'm going to approach doing a couple different paintings of the apple trees. Like I said, I've never done one before. I've done plenty of trees. I've done plenty of flowers, but never apple blossoms or apple trees. So, um, I want to do probably two or three paintings. Um, I'm going to do one out in an open field overlooking a landscape. Uh, I'll do one kind of as a focal tree. It'll be mainly just the tree in the painting, maybe a little bit of background. Um, and then I want to do one really close up of the apple blossoms, the branches, and the leaves themselves. So what I think, um, which one I should do first, is the one that's up close so I can really study how the blossoms are, how they open, how they're semi-open, how some of them are closed, uh, the leaf shape, the way the branches kind of twist and turn and bend, and I'll learn a lot about my subject before I go out and paint the big trees, um, because when you do the big trees, sometimes it's hard to do the little details and you get stuck using a liner brush and trying to paint every little thing, but if you learn a lot about how um, these are shaped, it's a lot easier to suggest them with fewer brush strokes. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But for now, what I want to do is focus in on the close-up of the apple blossoms. So, since I've never done this before, uh, what I like to do is do a sketch. Uh, actually, I'll do a few sketches. I'll do one, uh, a simple sketch of just the elements, then I'll make a bigger sketch of maybe the overall composition of what my painting will be, and then I'll do the painting. So for, for today's video, what we're going to do is just the sketching. And what I like to do is take a few reference photos um, of the branches, and then I'm going to take some clippers and just clip off just a little tiny piece here and bring into the studio so I can kind of twist it and turn it and look at, look at it up close while I'm doing my sketches from the reference photo. Okay, so what we're going to learn is uh, we're going to learn what do the blossoms look like closed, semi-open, and open. What are the value shifts? Uh, since we're doing a sketch, we're not going to be doing any color yet. We're going to be learning about the value. Uh, what's the value difference between the branch, the leaves, and the flowers, and so on. So let's uh, take a little clip of this, take a few pictures, and then go into the studio and start out our sketching. Okay, I'm going to start my sketch now, and I'll have the image come up here on the screen for a second, uh, the one that I'm going to be using. I'm actually going to use a couple different images that I took to create my own branch of apple blossoms. Um, this first image has mostly uh, blossoms that are closed, so I want to add in a few uh, that have that are more open uh, just so I can have some variety in the branch. But we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go. Okay, I've got, for my pencils, I've got my, uh, my Faber-Castell pencil set from 2H to 7B, or 8B, I should say. 
And then I've got a kneaded eraser, a Prismacolor white colored pencil, and a deco color uh, white ink. It's a, a fine ink that's a very bright white. Um, I probably won't use this much at all. We'll see. I have it here handy just in case. If you don't have that, it won't really matter. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a B pencil. The initial portion of the flowers up here um, are, are very, the, the flowers themselves are very delicate. So what I'm going to do is just really lightly block in the overall shape very, very lightly. Okay, and then I've, I'll go a little bit darker with the leaves. But what I'm doing is just sketching in pretty uh, light and just very rough with my shapes. I'm trying to kind of figure out the overall shape of these blossoms. So there's these little star shaped leaves on the bottom of the blossom. That's important to recognize. So I'll draw that little star shape in, then you've got a little stem coming off. You can see I'm starting out very, very light with my lines, so that way I can later on I'll uh, darken them up a little bit. Okay, I'm switching up now to a 4B pencil, and I'm just gonna take my time here and look at each little element. I'm gonna start with this leaf right here. Just defining the back edge. comes down and then it has a stem coming down like that. Okay, then we have this piece here. It's a very interesting looking leaf. It has two pieces coming off it. Okay, then I'll start working in behind. There's another leaf that's coming down. It gets narrow as it gets closer to the stem. This leaf has a cool shape to it. It's bent up and then has a little scoop, then flattens out, curves around, 
comes down to a point. Gives a nice 3D element. Okay, and then I'll work a little bit further later. Okay, now up through. Okay, so then we have the first blossom. So I made it just a little bit bigger. And this comes down, curves around. We've got that interesting looking star shape. stem comes down off of that. Okay, and then this apple blossom, I'm going to make a little bit bigger. It's got a really cool little triangular piece out at the edge. stem coming back. Okay, what I'm going to do now is start adding in some of the detail and I want to talk about about the value a little bit. Uh, what I want to do is maybe find a dark area. We have this leaf here. What I want to do is do some just, I have my 4B pencil, just some cross hatching to darken that up. Then I'll darken up the lines a little bit. I'm going to focus a little bit more on line work. Put a little bit of a heavy line in some spots. Okay, as we move up here, again, uh, this bottom, bottom line of this leaf be a little bit heavier since it's in shadow. Then maybe we can put those little spiky shapes And then it's a little bit darker in through there, but there's a little bit of a shadow underneath. But there's a highlight up through here, so we're not going to darken that up. We'll darken up the spots, just cross-hatching, shading a little bit. Okay, in behind this next leaf. A little bit of a shadow. So now what I'm doing is starting to understand the value a little bit. The leaves have um, two very kind of distinct values, a very dark green. In between these two leaves crisscrossing there's some shadow. We have a very dark green and a very light green. Since we're using toned paper, I'm going to leave the apple blossoms the same color they are right now uh, until I get done shading in some of these other, the dark green leaves. So I'll, this leaf here is quite dark, so I'll just do some scribbling just to darken that up. Okay, I'm going to switch now to my white colored pencil, and what I'm going to do is just kind of look at 
the light areas on these apple blossoms. And just lighten up those little, uh, little areas. So here we have a little bit of light just hitting that one little piece. So you can kind of see how they split off into um, kind of these little sections when they're closed. They have, they're kind of these two little pieces like this right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go with my 2H pencil. I'm just going to add in some of the shadow. Just a little scribbling and also some of the little lines and indentations in the flowers. All right, and then I'm gonna to go to my 7B pencil. I'm gonna really bring up the contrast now. Okay, what I'll have you do now is just continue out uh, throughout the branch. If you want to do the whole branch, you can. Um, I'm going to do most of the branch, add in some more of the flowers. I'm going to jump ahead. Um, at the end, I'll show you adding in another element, um, an open flower that's not actually in this photo, but I'm going to take it from another photo and incorporate it just to add to the composition. But uh, you kind of see how I go over the process. I sketch it in lightly, go in a little bit darker, add in some highlights with my, my white colored pencil, and then go in with my darkest pencil and darken it up some. So go ahead and move out throughout the, uh, the picture and I'll catch up with you at the very end. Okay, I'm gonna take my B pencil. You can see I'm, I've moved up ahead a little bit. Now I've uh, added in some more detail down here uh, and you can do that as well. Uh, basically what we're doing is trying to figure out how each one of these elements work and uh, you can kind of see they kind of um, have these little bunches in each spot and they kind of splay out into different sections. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna take a B pencil and I'm gonna take and create a little branch coming down here. And what I'm doing is taking this from a separate picture which I'll have pop up on the screen here. And I'm not trying to copy it exactly, but what I'm trying to do is just fill this space here. And what I want to do is have an open flower to give some definition to the overall drawing. Uh, so what I'm doing is taking two branches and creating my own composition from that. So on this piece here, we have we have some leaves coming up like this. And 
really study the shape. So I'm gonna go pedal by pedal. Let's start with this outside pedal. It's a little gap and then a tall pedal. Kind of flat on the top. Okay, and then the next one right next to it. It's actually a little more pointy on top. Comes down and then circles down like this. Okay, then we have a large pedal coming out. The line starts up like this, then it angles down. Comes down and around, and then we've got another large pedal, and then they all kind of come in and meet in this middle point. And the middle point has little circular pieces. Okay, and then we can add in some of these other elements like these leaves coming down. Okay, then just below Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go in and detail this just like I did uh, the rest of it and then I'll jump ahead to the just the final little touches and then a little bit of an explanation of what I'm going to do next uh, for my painting. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up my drawing. Um, and remember, when you do a sketch like this, it's just uh, we're trying to learn things about our subject, especially if it's something we've never painted before. Uh, this is my initial step is I want to do a sketch, learn about you know the relationship of how big the leaves are to the flowers, uh, different shapes, um, how, the, how the flower shapes uh, look, the petals next to each other, next to the leaves. Uh, a couple things I learned really specifically are how the branches twist. They're very um, twisty, curvy branches in an apple tree. Uh, the leaves are, in general, um, pretty similar size all around. You get some of these little small ones that are, are still growing, but for the most part they're all pretty much the same size. They all kind of have that um, circular edge then a flat bottom, especially when you see them from the side. The Flower blossoms, as they open, they get wider up top. Um, as they're more uh, closed like this, they're more of kind of like a little heart shape, and but the top part's pretty close together. And then when the flowers open like this, uh, the leaves have a nice organic shape, or the petals have a nice organic shape. Uh, there's five petals, and uh, those are all little things that you can remember as you're doing your own painting because 
what we want to do is just use this as a reference or our photos as a reference and make up our own painting because that way we can control the composition. So let's talk about the final steps to, um, that we're going to take in order to create the painting next and uh, we'll zoom out and talk about that for a minute. Okay, so apple blossoms are something I've never painted before. So my first step was to create a sketch, uh, just basically learning about you know, what type of shape the leaves are, uh, which way the branches curve, um, how everything's kind of put together. Okay, so my next step will be learning a lot about the color. Uh, we've got kind of the shapes and the values down, but now we have to learn uh, what colors am I gonna mix to create apple blossoms, leaves, the branch, the background, and all of that. So uh, for the next episode, I hope you stay tuned. We're gonna do an episode of What's That Color for Apple Blossoms, and we're gonna go through a bunch of color mixtures until we figure out uh, what colors we're gonna use to create this painting. Okay, so that's it for part one of Adventures in Painting. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you stay tuned for part two so you can learn all about those color mixtures uh, for apple blossoms. And if you're enjoying these videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss out on any of the episodes coming up. And also, as always, if you want to help me out, please feel free to share with your friends. If you're interested in online painting lessons or in-person workshops, please visit www.timgunyer.com. I have a large variety of lessons covering everything from still life to landscape. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again soon.